And so they said, be very careful when, you know, your time here is finite, that when you leave and you say, we're going to remain close friends on Facebook or via social media platforms. And then, you know, as I mentioned, you, you get, you re immerse into your old life and you get busy and you s sort of forget about them. It doesn't really make any difference or have any impact on your life, but it can adversely impact them seriously. So they said, be careful about that. Um, and they also said, you know, because by virtue of the fact that you've, you're volunteering here, you've, you've voluntarily paid airfare, in many cases, you're paying for your own lodging just to help others philanthropically out of the goodness of your own heart. But these people will, in, in the course of conversation, will appreciate that you're of greater means and greater resources and may try to, not in a sinister way, but ask you for material help in some way. Can you, can you fill out forms for me? Can you provide me money? Can you help me? Because my family is experiencing very dire circumstances back in the home country, or maybe you got separated on the journey over and they're in another European country and I need help. And they said, you know, be very careful because it is admirable that you, out of a sense of compassion, that you want to help these people, but you can't, you can't, th these people, you know, the, am the amount of help that they need is, it's sort of a bottomless pit because their lives are in a very precarious position. So if you give one person, let's say $5, you know, what happens if other refugees find out about that? We're supposed to treat everybody equally and help them all. Um, you can't give everybody $5, but then what happens if, so, if a refugee comes back to you and says, I need 10 or 15, and you see where I'm going with this pattern. So they said, you know, we need to be very careful about maintaining our humanity and our compassion and not being robotic about it. It's perfectly natural for two people who are working closely together, and one is a mentor of sorts, to get close. But by the same token, we do want to draw a line. Maybe it's not a hard, black, bold face line, but a line where there is a separation between, you know, they are refugees, but that's not, that's not all they are. Just because we ascribe that status to them, they still have hopes and dreams and desires just like us. Um, but we do want to have some separation or delineation between those who are trying to help or provide care and those who are receiving it. Because if we blur the lines too much, it will inadvertently elicit complexities, which will be hard for the refugees to deal with emotionally. Ultimately, ultimately in other words, we're looking at it from their perspective, right? The first rule is do no harm. And if we, th we think that we're doing good, but we, you know, unwittingly make their lives more challenging, from a physical health or emotional health perspective or standpoint, that's, um, that's something to be avoided.